Hey everybody, I'm Alexis. In this video, I want to talk about how to tell if you are an N or an S in the Myers-Briggs system in just four questions. Um, I think this one is particularly important because in my experience, this is the dichotomy that I think online tests get wrong the most often. Because when I go through those tests and I look at how they word them, the wording is terrible. It's basically like, if you have ever been creative ever or have had any thought ever, you're an N. And if you are just boring and do like the lame old things all the time, you're an S. So of course, with that type of biased wording and questions, people are going to go toward the one that sounds good. And that would lean toward a bias toward the N function. I'm gonna try my very best to adequately describe questions that are not biased, that are, that encapsulate the strengths and the weaknesses of both equally. Okay, the first way to tell if you're an N or an S is to what level are you observant? So when you walk into a room, do you notice if someone has new decor? Or do you notice if someone has new wheels on their truck? Or if you're playing tennis with someone, do you notice that they bought a new racket without them saying anything? Do you notice if someone got a haircut or if someone changed their hair? Um, in general, S's tend to be looking at things and they are very observant. They are very attuned to the present moment and they are kind of looking at what exists. Um, on the other hand, N's are not observant really at all. So unless it's a very dramatic change. So if someone is wearing a very different, like maybe a bright pink outfit, they normally wouldn't, and then might be like, oh wow, I like that shirt. But most of the time, they're not going to be observant to minor changes. They're only going to be observant to major changes. Even if there's a major change, like you get an entirely new vehicle, sometimes an N will not notice that. And this tends to be because N's are not oriented toward what they are experiencing right now. They are experiencing um, what could be. So one way to tell is just to notice what is your attention on? Are you notice, like, are you looking at people and what they're wearing? And are you looking at things in the room? Or are you kind of looking past things and you are attuned to kind of what's going on in your mind? S's are noticing what is there and I think N's are noticing what is not there, meaning where things are going or where they could be going. The second way to tell is to look at, do you tend to focus more on the past and the present or on the future? And whichever one you focus on more, that's the one you're going to be more positively inclined toward. So you're going to be immersed in that tense of time, either the present or the past or the future, and you're going to lean toward it positively. So for example, S's tend to be more focused on the past and the present, and they tend to view those things a little optimistically. Um, whereas when S's think of the future, they're a little pessimistic, they're a little worried. When they think about where society in general is going, that bothers them. Um, new inventions like social media are more bothersome to these types. Um, they're more likely to say things like the good old days. And they really like the tried and true and they are going to be more oriented toward the past. And even if they're not always thinking of the past or the present in a positive light, that is where their mind is oriented. They're in the present moment, interacting with the world, or they're in their memories and thinking about how that impacted them. On the other hand, ends can be very forgetful of the past. And because of that, maybe in their careers, they tend to reinvent the wheel, constantly seeking invention. Um, there's not going to be as much stability in their lives. And because they are forgetful of the past, sometimes it can make them a little bit ungrounded. Um, whereas when ends think of the future, they're going to think of the future optimistically. They're excited about the new and exciting things that are going to be invented. Um, new creations that are going to be made are very exciting to them. So they tend to be excited about the future and what's coming around the corner and a little bit forgetful of the past and what is happening in the present. Um, they're not really always with you. They are, someone will be talking to an N and they are kind of processing it and connecting it to other things here. So even in the present moment, they're a little um, forgetful of the present moment. And the third way to tell if you're an N or an S, if you had your choice of a topic of conversation, would you want that to be about people, places, things, hobbies, experiences, what's going on in that person's life? Um, or would you rather topics of conversation be about concepts and theories? Oh, I read in this book the other day that older siblings tend to marry older siblings. And that isn't grounded to any person or experience unless you ground it back into the sensing world, which is like, oh, Bob and Jan were both older siblings and things like that. So as soon as you ground it and you attach the concept to a person or a place or experience that you have been a part of or experience that you've heard of other people being a part of, that becomes more of an S topic of conversation. Whereas ends like the theory and the concept in and of itself, even if it may not apply to them, 
some types are a little bit different on this subject than others. But the more specifics you leave out of a conversation, the more of an end conversation it is, and the more specifics you draw back into a conversation, that's more of an ask conversation. And then finally, the fourth way, do you feel most comfortable and like yourself when you have been doing something you've done for a long time? Maybe you've done, played tennis, for example, for many years and you've honed your craft. Do you feel the best then? Or do you prefer things right when you first learn them? And do you feel most like yourself when you're trying something new? Does your brain feel more alive and connected in flow when you're doing something you've done for a long time and you've honed it? or when you're trying something new for the first time. So the next video that I recommend that you go watch is if you are a thinker or feeler in the Myers-Briggs system. Um, thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.